the streaming Rolling Village, which is a free print and play game. Uh, so you can find it on BGG, but of course, as always, I will also link you the sheet in case you don't have it yet. There we go. There's a sheet for you guys if you need it. So I will be teaching the rules and we'll be playing it live. So if you want, you can play along. And if you like my games, feel free to follow me. I'm doing play alongs an awful lot. I, I like them. I've done them daily for about two weeks now. Next week, my schedule is going to be kind of hectic. I have a lot of re written review deadlines coming up and I need to spend a bit of time on that. And we're expecting a really bad heat wave in the upcoming week. So I'm not going to promise how often I'll be live and what times I'll be live exactly. But if you follow me, you'll get a notification. And I will still try to do streams every day. I know on Monday I, I will for sure do one at 7 p.m. But the rest of the week is currently kind of up in the air a little bit. So please bear with me there. But yeah, I'm definitely not gonna stop streaming anytime soon. So I hope you guys stick around for, with me. Alright, so what we will be doing in this game is we'll be creating a little village of our own. You are the mayor of that village. And the town will need houses for people to live in, but the people also want some nature. So they want some forest and some lakes around. And on uh, for the solo mode, it is you are considered to have one if you score 60 or higher. So it's a beat your own high score, but there's a little bit of a target so you can see whether you've won or lost. Like a lot of the free print and play games uh, that I've discovered during the past months, these work really well social distancing so everybody can just grab a sheet and you can play over Zoom or webcam or phone calls or whatever with somebody just rolling dice and then everybody doing something on their own sheet, which is lovely, I think. So what we'll do at the start of the game is we'll determine two rows and put one of the random buildings in there. So you can put any building you want. So we put one building in number 5 and one building in number 6. These numbers are points. So it's nice to put a building around those points so it can score. But it will only score during future rounds when the total of the dice adds up to a particular row. So obviously this one is worth more than that one. But it's harder to roll and this one is easier to get. So with that logic you might want to go for this one. But that's up to you. I am going to go for this one personally. Uh, which one would I like to put there? I'll put a little house there. And then... Uh, and you do need to draw two different projects. So the one I draw here cannot be a house. So I'll draw something else here. I think I'll go with a lake. So that's set up. And then we can actually start playing. So each turn we roll two dice and the game will only last nine turns. So it's a pretty quick game. And then these numbers will decide where you have to build projects. So I have to build something in number 3 and I have to build something in number 5. And it will also determine what type. So 3 refers to a lake and 5 refers to a forest. And 1 will be placement and 1 will be location. So type 3 is a lake, which means type 3 goes in 5. So a lake goes somewhere here. And then 5 is the forest and it goes somewhere in the other number. So in 3, so a forest goes here somewhere and a lake goes here somewhere. That's what you'll have to be doing. And after, at the end, we will at the end of this turn, we'll score row number eight. So I might want to place something here. And ideally, you want to try and connect a big group together vertically. But because say I already had a lake here, and then I put a lake here, then anytime any of these columns score, this is considered one big group. So I get to score all of the points. So that's what you ideally want to do: make vertical groups of the same type. But obviously, the dice have some influence in. If you could actually accomplish that or not. There's also a four type a town square. I will explain exactly how that works if we ever manage to roll a double in most games that comes up at some point. If you're playing along live and you're like, but tell me now, you can always ask and I'll tell you now. But I know most people prefer to just start playing and figure it out as they go with the quicker games such as this one. Because if you want to know everything up front, you might as well read a rule book. So Generally, the people that attend these like to just get going as quickly as possible. And obviously, if you're not wanting to play along life and you just want to hang out a bit. Oh, that's not... Yeah, that's right. Three and five and a five and three. But yeah, if you only really want to hang out a bit and learn how to play a game, then it's obviously more interesting if I'm actually playing instead of only talking about rules for too long. 
So that's the end of the first turn. We'll now count eight. So that only has this one measly point. So I'll write down one point. And then we're rolling for the second turn, a four and a one. So that means we need to place a house in number one and a house in number four. And at the end of that round, uh, at the end of that turn, we will score that one, column number five. Oh, it doesn't really matter what I put where then, because I'm not gonna be able to get to score anything, except the one point that's already there. But I won't be able to extend that anywhere, because I have to place something here and here. So I can just set myself up later. I gotta put something here, so if I do score this, I'll score quite a few points at once but I think instead I'm gonna put this here so that no matter what total I roll I'll always get at least one point regardless of what row we're scoring it's it you don't easily get a big combo that way but as long as I'm not set up for a nice combo at least this way I can be sure that I always get to score a little bit of something I think that's all right with me right now and again I score only one measly point sad we're never gonna get to 60 this way you guys and then I'm rolling for the third turn so four is a house, which goes in the other number. So in six, you put a house and in number four, you put a lake. And after that, we're scoring number 10. Well, that means in, I definitely want to put something here. So that's in number six, that had to be number four. So that's a house, so we'll put a house here. And ideally I will want a house here as well pretty soon so that I can score all of these as one big group. That'd be great. And then in number four, we had to put a lake. I think I'm going to put the lake up here. And then if I manage to put a lake here, this will also become one big group. Before we score the current row, you get to place a star. And a star means any one of the basic projects anywhere on your sheet. But each third turn in the game, you have to pick a different one. So if I pick a house now, I cross it off. And the next time I can only pick between forest and lake. And then the last time I can only pick the one I haven't used at all yet. So I'm going to put a house here then. Because that's something I already was thinking about anyway. And then only after that you actually score the row. So this happens before scoring. I pick the house. I have to mark that off so I don't mess it up later. And then because these are connected. They now score anytime we score any of these rows. So I get to score 2 plus 3 plus 2. So that's much better. That's 7. Still not great. But we're getting somewhere. And then there's a little box here that you can use to add these three together. So at the end of the game, adding up the score for all nine rounds will be a little quicker. And then we're moving on to turn four. So we're already one third into the game and we're not even here for 10 minutes. So as you can see, it's a really quick game. Especially once you already know the rules and if you're not narrating all of your turns like I currently am. So a forest goes in number three. So a forest goes here and then a lake, which is number three, goes somewhere in number five. Oh, that's great. We wanted the lake up here. So let's put a lake up here. And then the forest goes somewhere in number three. And I'm going to put that directly above the other forest so that I can make a group. And then we'll get to score row eight. So this one is empty, because, but it's directly connected to this one. Diagonals don't count, but this is one group. So that means I get to score these two points, even though we're scoring this row. Same for all of these lakes. This entire group of lakes is connected. And then as well as these houses. So I get 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Now we're finally really getting somewhere. Next turn. A 5 and a 1. So I got to put a house in number 5 and a forest in number 1. And... Um, by the way, if you do uh, place your bonus projects in a, in the same row, it's possible that one of your rows will fill up quicker than one of mine. If something is completely full, so maybe this one was completely full, you place it to the in one of the adjacent columns, and it has to be the most empty one. So if that ha if this one was full, this one has three empty spots, this one has two, so I would have to place it here. And if they're both equally full, you can pick which one you prefer. So a house somewhere up here. Hmm, I really don't care if I'm honest. I think it makes most sense to put it here so it's directly next to the other house. Hmm, or maybe not. In this case, I'm going to explain what a square does. I think that's a good moment to explain this. So if you ever do get a square, by rolling double, you place a square anywhere on your sheet and it will score bonus points if all three other projects are directly adjacent to it. So maybe if I get a forest here at some point, I will put a square here and it will score straight away. I would ideally want only houses here, but 
that would require really lucky dice rolls because I've already used my bonus house. But yeah, I do think I want to keep that spot free. So I'm going to put the house here at the bottom then. Not that I couldn't do this. Wait, I can actually do the exact same thing with the bottom of the forest. No, never mind. I do want to put it up top. Never mind. And then we have number five, which is a forest that goes somewhere in number one. I don't really want to put it next to this because ideally you want the same ones vertically connected. So I can either put it here or here. I think this one, this one obviously has a higher chance of scoring more often. So I'm going to go for this one. Then we score number six. Which is only this one, but it's connected to this group. So it's one, two, three points. That's not as good as the previous turn, obviously. And then we get a one and a six. And I was a little worried with this one that it might be obvious choices of where to put something. But because everybody starts their two basic projects in different spots at the beginning of the game, I've seen that people do uh, tend to pick different stuff. Obviously if you play it solo it doesn't matter at all, I mostly play this solo. But if I played it multiplayer, scores tend to be kind of similar but not completely identical and sheets don't end, to, don't end up identical. And that's why it helps that you get the bonus projects and the free starting positions and all that. So that you have a little bit of variety. But yeah, that was definitely something I was concerned about. So number one goes in number six, that's a house. I'm obviously going to put that one up here. And this doesn't score any quicker than, uh, than it would vertically. But if I do get a house here, then this entire group becomes connected. And this is just going to be zero points. So putting anything here doesn't gain me anything. So I think it's better to circle the points and then hopefully connect it. But even if I don't, at least if I score this, I get those points. And we get a lake somewhere in number one. I'm going to go for the last points spot that I have available in that row. I want to score number seven. But before we do that, we get to place another bonus project. I already used a house. So I have to pick between the forest and the lake. I'm going to put a forest up here, I think, so that I have another bigger group that can score more often. And now we're scoring number 7, so it's 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Great. I'm not unhappy with that. Alright, so that's 26 points for me this round, and then we're moving on to turn 7. So we're two thirds into this game right now. 1 and 6. Again! I promise these dice aren't broken, you guys. A lake in number one, so that's a lake somewhere here. It always makes most sense to connect them together, so I'm going to put another lake here. Also, it looks like we might not be seeing a double this time. So I'm glad I explained that somewhere along the way, so at least you know how it works. And then we get six. Oh no, we did six, we did one now, so it's a house that goes somewhere in number six. Well, that's obviously great. That means regardless of what row we're scoring, we'll always score, what is it at this point? Five, ten, we'll always score at least ten points, so that's going to be a really strong last round of three turns <laughs> whoa Lycan said that this one score I had here was three of his turns combined well that proves that even with the same die rolls your sheet looks far different than mine so in case anybody watching was also concerned about the about people doing the same thing we're currently proving nope we're not doing the same thing okay so now I get the score because I placed both of these so that's Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then the ten points here, so that's eighteen right now. It's always nice when something like this comes together. It doesn't happen that often, but it's so satisfying when it does. Like it says our sheets are worlds apart. Feel free to send me yours when you're done, and it goes for everybody playing, whether you're playing live or later on. I always love to, to hear about how you guys scored, and maybe even sending me a picture of your sheet. Or if you upload it to your own social media, tag me. I'm known in those games on Facebook and Instagram as well. Let's see, what are we doing now? We're putting a number two in one, so that will be a forest. And then we're putting a one, which is a house, somewhere in number two. I'm just going to put it here now. Might as well keep going with it and hope to get them all connected so that this is one really big group. Which would be insane. Or building like a coastal line type thing with like the, the house is actually being built around the nature instead of straight through nature. We're good for nature, you guys. We're not destroying nature in order to build our houses. I like it. Alright, and then we're scoring number three, which is this one. So that's three. And then the big group of ten, so that is thirteen. 
And then we're rolling the very final turn of the game, which is a 2 and a 4. So we're placing a forest somewhere in 4. Really doesn't matter, I can put it here, but it scores 0, so that's pretty wordless. Oh, which one did I draw here? The the four, uh, this one. I drew this forest. I forgot to mark this for the sixth turn. I need to make sure I put the right one at the end. That said, I would have liked having a forest because then I can do the forest here now and then the next turn a forest here and then we get a big group. Or the next turn I meant the bonus shape. But yeah, that's not allowed. Anyway, so a house in number two and a forest in number four. Really doesn't matter where I put the forest because it doesn't score here, so I'll just put it here. I guess if we had continued playing, we had had more turns, I would have found this the best placement. And even if it doesn't matter at the end of a game, I always try to place in the best way possible in case the game had continued because I feel like you can learn from still doing that. But if it breaks my brain, some games like the last move can be really hard and then if I know it won't make a difference for my score, I won't hold anybody up. But if it's not a hard decision and it's a quick playing game like this one, then I do prefer to play stuff as if it was still useful. So then we have number four, which is a house which goes somewhere here. Well, obviously we're putting that here. And that means this group of four will now score. These two will score, so two plus four is six. And then this group, seven, eight, nine, plus ten, so nineteen. Oh, we still get to do a bonus lake. It doesn't look like it matters where we're going to put that. No, it doesn't. So 19. And just for the heck of it, we'll put uh, this one here. So we would have a bigger group. And if we ever had any squares, this would be a place where it would be connected to all three basic projects. So that'd be nice too. And that's the end of this game. So let me tally that up. Usually you would at the end of the game look at all your squares and see if they score or not. And if so, they score 10 points. But we didn't get a square in this game. I think this is my first game without a square. That I've played of this. Not that I've played this a whole ton. I think this is the maybe the seventh time I've played this or something like that. And I only got to know this game in like May or so. So those plays have all been kind of close together. So anyway, let's see. Uh, 9, 10, 12 plus 8 is 20. And it will be 50. Ooh, that's high. Oh darn. Alright, let's see. 70, 79, 85. I I think them, that is definitely a very high scoring game. So I've met my goal. I am allowed to remain mayor of this town. Yay me. And that would be the stream for today. It was only 17 minutes. That was awfully short. Ah, oh, Lycan got 53. Ah, oh, so close. But yeah, I know Gen Con is this weekend. It actually started on Thursday, the online version of the Gen Con convention. I know. Now that it's weekends and a lot of people are off work, that a whole bunch of people are playing there. So it's a more quiet stream. If it had been a little bit more busy, I would have honored you guys and done maybe a second game after this one. But as it's so quiet and I know it's late for Lycan and he prefers to uh, get offline around this time, I think we're just gonna leave it at this one game for today. I will likely be back tomorrow. I'm hoping to do it at 10 p.m. It's possible that it will be 11 instead of 10, depending on how my day goes. But I will be back tomorrow, I still have to pick the game. And on Monday I'll be around at 7pm and after that, who knows? After that it's gonna be a surprise, you guys. And some of them are still gonna be play-alongs. I'm waiting on some new ones to come in. Dungeon Academy's coming in this week, which I'm really excited about. I think I might do that one Monday, depending on what time the package arrives. And, um, yeah. But I'm also going to do some, some actual playthroughs. I've had people request uh, me playing some of the, some solo games or solo modes. Stuff like Hostage Negotiator and Marvel Champions. So that they can learn how to play those when while watching me play them. So that's also coming up. <laughs> yeah, it was definitely a speedrun stream. Might happen tomorrow as well. Because depending on how busy my day gets and how well I get on with writing my reviews, I might end up doing Turning Sheep, which is also like 10 minutes a game. And there's two different layouts, even if I do both of them, that's going to be under 20. But yeah, I might do a longer game tomorrow. It really depends on how well I get on with writing my reviews. But yeah, thanks for being here. It was fun. I hope your combos pull together more nicely for your liking on the next go. But yeah. Thanks for being here. And everybody that's watching the replay, thanks for viewing this as well, even if you weren't here live. I still super appreciate it. 
and I hope to catch you guys another time. Bye everybody!